Welcome back, everybody. Today, I'm going to be talking about the two main core concepts of deck building. Now, regardless if you are playing a meta deck or you're playing a rogue deck, typically it's going to fall into one of these two categories. The first is maximizing your odds of hitting a particular game state. And this is a 2012 Dark Rime Mewtwo deck that I built specifically designed to maximize my odds of hitting Dark Rai EX as quickly as possible. We do this with things like um, playing four, full four copies of Ultra Ball, playing 10 Dark Energies when a lot of Dark Rai decks at the time only played eight or nine. Igor Costa played as low as seven, I think. Um, playing that Sky Arrow Bridge, Professor Juniper, along with those Dark Patches, playing that extra copy of Smeargle. All of those really little choices contributed to maximizing the odds of getting that early dark ray. Ideally, if you open with smear goal, you might be able to play two supporters that first turn. Um, playing that extra copy of Ultra Ball over Dual Ball slightly increased your odds of being able to um, put dark energy into the discard pile early to find back with dark patch. And then of course, actually playing the dark that extra dark energy increased your odds of um, seeing it early to either be able to attach it or to be able to discard it with the Ultra Ball or the Juniper. So even those really little small decisions all greatly contributed to hitting an early Dark Rai as quickly as possible. In the 2012 format, generally speaking, having a consistent deck was going to win you a larger percentage of games than playing a teched out deck. And if you went in with an incredibly teched out deck where you're trying to counter every deck in the format, um, statistically speaking, you weren't gonna, you weren't as favored. So in formats like this, and I'm gonna say this is a more representative of the modern format, where essentially teching for heavily teching for particular matchups is considerably less important than just playing a super consistent list. The second approach is what I'm going to say is a little bit more common in older formats where you are very heavily teching decks out. And if you don't spend a lot of spots teching for particular matchups, there's quite a few matchups that you probably aren't going to win. It's very common to have matchups swing 20 or 30 percent depending on how you're teched for them. And this is an updated list for Garchomp that I'm currently testing, which really shows how important um, teching for particular matchups are, particularly the energy lineup. Because you have so many spots in here that you have to basically decide what matchups are you expecting, how do you how heavily do you want to tech for those? Things like if you're expecting to see Gardevoir every single round, you want to play that higher psychic energy count. If you think Gardevoir is gonna be less popular, do you play a lower psychic energy count and play higher in the tech lineups. I was running into a lot of um, Glaceon decks, so I started playing the one metal energy. Is that worth it? Um, I To make some of the, the room for some of the stuff, I had to go down to one fire energy. Hurts the Leafeon matchup a little bit, hurts the Torterra matchup a little bit, but what's that trade-off? These are all questions you, you have to ask yourself and try to kind of find that balance um, you also notice to make room for some of these other techs, I put in one copy of Crystal Beach. This is going to be significantly better against a lot of the other control decks that play Crystal Beach, but significantly worse against decks like Gardevoir. Once again, you got to have that balance in teching. Play Doug Drio in here. Um, I find a lot of decks in the format think they have a relatively good Empoleon matchup until they actually play against Empoleon. Um, Doug Drio alone can swing that Empoleon matchup um, 30 30% easily. Play double patch Risus because of all the cessation crystals. Um, you have absolutely you have a 1 1 Cresselia line. There's just so many different ways to tech this deck. Um, even just going these 1 1 routes here, I would say you have Cresselia, Dusnor, Muck, Dugdrio, at least four different 1 1 lines you could play. Um, I've tested the deck with 2 2 Cresselia in it too. Very good against a lot of decks in the format. Horrible against, say, Gardevoir. Gardevoir, you'd much rather have access to that um, Muck, for example, or even that Dustnor. I find a lot of players will just fill their bench against this deck. Dustnor is incredibly good against Blissey as well. 
So it's difficult to come in and try to always find that balance, but essentially in the older formats, you have to, if you're not teching for particular matchups, you're probably going to lose. If I didn't play the Doug Drio, my Empoleon matchup would probably go from 70-30, 75-25 to probably a 40-60. Um, if I didn't have my energy lineup right, that could easily swing matchups 10, 15, 20, 25%. Things like Absolute X, for example. There's a lot of risk in playing Absolute. It's a horrible opener, but there's also a lot of situations where Absolute can come out and just straight win you games. Same thing with the Cresselia playing a 1 1 line. If I played a 2 2 line, I decrease the odds of prizing it. What do I cut for that? And just asking yourself all of these little questions have such a huge impact on how games are going to play out and what your percentages are in those games. And I think that's one of the things that I find um, in particular in some of the older formats is players really, really struggle in particular matchups and they get frustrated because they're like, I just don't know why I can't win this matchup. But they they don't fully look at how their deck is built to play against the other deck. Um, they don't really, they don't fully look at, um, is my deck teched well enough to beat that deck? What can I tech into this deck to beat that deck? And I think understanding the concept of teching and what techs are going to work well against certain decks and really testing that out, um, is a very important part of playing the older formats in particular. And I think, once again, I think players just get too frustrated too easily and don't really try to tech decks in the right way. Um, the last concept I want, the last thing I want to say is generally in the more consistent a format is, the easier it is to tech it. So in a format like this, where essentially Claydol is the backbone about every single deck in the format, as long as you have enough ways to get that Claydol out, it gives you a lot of freedom in other areas of your deck to play techs. Um, I'm going to say even in a format like 2004, that can be very techy. It is incredibly important um, to make sure that you have enough consistency cards, enough consistency options, where formats like 2008, I mean, even say 2009 to an extent, where you have um, like Call Energy, you have Claydol, it's a lot easier to play some of those different techs because you already have that consistency built in and you don't need to devote um, a ton of extra spots to that consistency. But anyways, that's going to go ahead and wrap up the video. But whenever we're covering concepts or decks on the channel, um, I will say every single one of my decks usually follows one of these two um, routes. So I'm hoping this video helps you understand my line of thinking a little bit more and also maybe gives you some things to think about also when you're either building decks, um, current or retro, and at the same time too, um, when you're kind of, um, digesting decks as well, when you're watching these videos, just kind of thinking about how the deck is built, how it's teched, what the deck is teched for, um, especially when you go back and look at retro decks from the time frame. I think that's the other thing players miss a lot. Um, I'll see people do like videos where they'll cover decks from the past and not fully grasp why certain cards were played or certain situations why cards would come up which is, I, I understand 100%, it's very, very hard if you don't play in that particular format to really grasp why certain texts were played. Um, but at the same time, too, I think it's so important to really look and you're like, oh, that's a little off. I wonder why that deck plays that card. Um, and it gives you not only another way to look at the deck, but I think also really opens up um, your thought process in the format and, and how you approach games and how you approach matchups. But hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you in the next one.